Water is as important to life as is oxygen and food. Water is the major component of blood, which transports oxygen and other nutrients to all parts of the body and removes waste from the body as well. Water helps regulate body temperature. It also helps in chemical and fluid balances. Also, water provides moisture and lubrication to the skin and other parts of the body. Hi, I'm Kathy Getrist, and today we're going to be talking about water and other fluids in our body. Fluid intake is the amount of fluid, both water and other in, uh, liquids, that's taken into the body. Fluid is taken into the body through the mouth, through uh, a feeding tube that a patient might have, as well as an intravenous infusion into the vein. Normal adults take in approximately two to 3,000 cc's of fluid every day. These two bottles here that I have represent 4,000 cc's of fluid. Each one of these bottles holds approximately 2,000 cc's so that one whole bottle and a half of another would be normal amount of fluid intake for an adult individual. Fluid output is the total amount of fluid that is eliminated from the body. That elimination is in the form of urine, perspiration from the skin, um, also called sweat, through liquid stool, uh, called diarrhea, with emesis or vomiting, and wound drainage as well. Approximately two to 3,000 cc's of fluid per day is lost. As you notice, that is approximately the same as the intake. In order to stay healthy, the amount of fluid taken into the body needs to be just about the same as the amount of fluid that goes out of the body. About 50 to 60 percent of the adult body weight is made up of water. In an infant and in small children, that percent is even more. It's approximately 70 to 80 percent of the body weight is water. Whereas in the older adult, that body weight amount of water drops down to about 45 or 50 percent. Fluid imbalances occur when intake and output are different. The first thing I'd like to talk about is edema. Edema is when fluid intake exceeds fluid output. That means there's too much water that is retained in the body. When that happens, an individual will gain weight. Sometimes we're talking about five pounds of weight gain in the course of even one day. There's also swelling of the feet, ankles, hands, face sometimes. And also you might notice that there's a collection of fluid in the lungs. Many times you'll be able to hear rattling of the person's breathing and a chronic cough that is giving indication that there is fluid that's being retained in the individual's lungs. Dehydration is the opposite problem, and that's when there is fl fluid output exceeds the fluid intake, when there is too little fluid in the body. When dehydration occurs, the skin becomes very dry, and there is a decreased urinary output. When there's a decreased urinary output, the individual will have a small amount of urine that is usually has a foul smelling smell to it. Also, the urine may be dark in color and very concentrated. In addition, another thing that might be uh, evidenced with a person who is dehydrated is that they may have dry lips, may have dry tongue, a mouth. They'll talk about their uh, having difficulty in speech and also will complain of being thirsty many times. A note about caffeinated beverages. There is caffeine in a lot of the beverages that we uh, take in. I think most notably is coffee. But there's also a lot of caffeine that is in tea, and many of our soft drinks have caffeine in it. 
and caffeine will actually increase the amount of urine output. So if an individual that is already dehydrated receives caffeinated beverages, the amount of output will become even greater than it might have been without that. The only way that the healthcare team can know when a patient's balance of fluids is not right is by measuring the patient's intake and output. Commonly, they just say I and O because intake and output is a mouthful. So frequently, you will hear them talk about someone being on I and O. A starving person can lose half of the body protein and almost half of the body weight and still live. But if an individual loses even one-fifth of the amount of water or other fluids in their body, they will die. Shows the importance to the uh, fluid that is a part of our bodies. Many times the healthcare team will help with maintaining fluid balance by increasing or decreasing the patient's fluid intake or by providing some medical interventions to aid in the elimination of fluid. An example that comes to mind would be sometimes patients are placed on water pills called diuretics. This is for people who are retaining too much fluid and it, it encourages the kidneys to um, rid the body of, of this excess amount of water. It's very important for members of the healthcare team to keep accurate records. Intake and output is recorded on the medical record immediately after the intake and output has, been, uh, has occurred. Intake and output totals will be added up at the end of every shift and then also at the end of a 24-hour period of time. Charting intake and output exercise is provided in the student manual in this lesson. This exercise will allow you to become more proficient in recording the amounts on an intake and output record. So take time after this lesson to practice on those sheets. A record of intake and output may be kept for days or even weeks as prescribed by the physician. The intake and output results will be evaluated by the nurse and physician for the valuable information that they provide. So accuracy is paramount. The most commonly used system of measurement in healthcare is the metric system. In the metric system, fluids are measured in cubic centimeters, called cc's, or in milliliters, or abbreviated mls. This is rather than in ounces, teaspoons, tablespoons, which if you recall, ha is a household system of measurement. In healthcare, household system of measurement is not used, but rather the metric system. One cc cubic centimeter is approximately one ml milliliter. I say approximately because if you look at the amount listed on the side of a soda can, it will say that 12 ounces equals 355 milliliters. And 12 ounces actually equals 360 cubic centimeters. So you can see there is a difference between 355 milliliters and 360 cubic centimeters but it's only five point difference. And for ease of calculations in healthcare, we think of milliliters and cubic centimeters as being the same. There are 30 cubic centimeters or 30 milliliters in one ounce. To calculate the intake and output, you will use the formula one ounce is equal to 30 cubic centimeters or 30 milliliters.